everybody, you want to stand to your feet today. We want to go to the Lord in prayer today to welcome him into this place. Jesus, Lord God, Lord, we need your presence today, God. Lord, you are welcome in this place, God, in your house, God, today. God, we ask you to move, God. Lord, in this place, God, Lord, have your way, Jesus, Lord. We love you, Jesus' name. shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild, and hey, don't be afraid, run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you, dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be Come back. Come back to communion. Come back to the start. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Cause where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Shake at the sound of Jesus' oh, lies name. Lives made whole. Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall. Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole. Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Shout, Shout like the chains have been broken. He did it. He did it. Shout like the chains have been broken. He did it. 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 He saved my he soul. It. He made me he whole. He set me he free. Let me victory. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Out of the dark, out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the spirit is. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Chains can fall in this place at the mention of His name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' Your name. Your life can be made whole. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Yes. Chains will fall. Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. The sound of his name. Lives made whole. Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Dance, dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace 
Grace is waiting. Grace is it's waiting right here waiting for you. For oh, shout. Shout like the chains have been broken. Because he did it. He did it. Yes, he did. He did it. He did it. Oh, shout. Shout like the chains have been broken. He did it. 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 Break out, break out. 
Receive what God 
mighty church do in this place. Let it rain. Because he is here. Oh, the Spirit of God is here. He is moving. Don't miss your opportunity. Oh, to reach out and touch him. Let it can make their way forward. Brother Delaney, can you pray over our offering? atmosphere is changing nothing stays the same heaven is waiting for the mansion of the name the spirit is moving burning like a flame healing the broken by the one we proclaim Raise it up and feel the sky. Chains will fall, mountains move, we lift him high. Speak the name, the name above all other names. Speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey.
gather our wonder, hostages in the shame, miracles unfolding at the mention of the name. you to raise your hands and call on the name of Jesus this very moment. The name that's above every name. The name that has all power in heaven and earth. The name that causes the demons and devils to tremble. <laughs> that name, come on, that name is present in his house today. Chains can fall. The prison walls can crumble. Lives can be transformed and be made new. Come on, you can leave a different person than what you came in Jesus' name. I can't do it for you. They can't do it for you, but Jesus can do it for you. Mm, mm, mm. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise if you would. certainly good to see everyone today. I'm thankful for what I feel in this house. Can we give all of our guests, the returning guests, a good hand, please? We are so thankful you come to worship with us and just allow God to have his way in our lives, all of us. Amen. You can be seated in the lovely name of Jesus. Real quick, the men's conference this weekend starts Friday night. 
I believe it starts at 7 o'clock. And then again on Saturday morning, I believe it starts at 9 o'clock on Saturday, uh, Friday, Saturday morning. Uh, it's $50, but uh, you, you have the option of paying per service. If you can only go to one service, it's $20 for Friday night, $35 for Saturday. I encourage all the men that can to go to be strengthened, to be encouraged. Brother J.H. Osborne, Joel Urshan, two of the ministers that will be preaching, wonderful anointed men of God. You will be encouraged and enthused, and 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 the, and the and the Lord, the word of the Lord will change your life. Amen. Amen. In the bulletins, you will find a letter from me. I'm not resigning. You can't get rid of me that quick, that easy. And if you did, just to let you know, the next Sunday will be another apostolic church here in Oak Ridge, and you all will be invited to come worship with us, just to let you know. Uh, if you want to know what the letter says, get a bulletin. Amen. Sunday school classes can be dismissed. Turn to someone and tell them it's good to see them today. It's good to see you today. I present to you today a thought that God gave me last week, and I actually did a little video of it on our church Facebook page on Friday, and even while I was talking in the video, I felt the Spirit just move upon me, and I felt like I should take it deeper and further even today. And even after conversation with some of you, I know not because of who I am, because I'm 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 nobody. I'm just a I'm just a ball of clay. When I die, I'm gonna go back to the dust. But I do believe I've got a word for some people, if not everybody, today. Now I will give you a warning. I have never stepped into this platform with four pages of notes. As they say, there's a first time for everything. We did not provide snacks today, so, so I got to hurry. I got a lot to say. I want to talk to you. It may sound like a very simple or elementary title, but I believe it's important to the Christian walk. And it's simply titled, Be Consistent. Be Consistent consistent. There's an old saying that I used to hear years ago. It says, half the battle is just showing up. That's half the battle. And so I added to it and said the other half of the battle is what you do once you show up. Half of it is just showing up. The other half is what are you going to do once you get there? How are you going to react? If I get a launch today, you don't have to stand. From Hebrews chapter 11, it's a very familiar portion of Scripture in verse number 6. He writes, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. We all, we all in our Christian want, want to please God. Right there is how you can please Him, without faith. You've got to have faith. Faith and being consistent go hand in hand. Because faith means I'm going to show up whether things are going right or not. I, I really thought I would get a few more amens than that. Let me, let me say this again. Faith means I'm going to show up whether things go right or not. Right. Whew, man, that's much better. It's much better. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that God is, and that God is a rewarder, I'm going to blow y'all's mind. The word rewarder means one who rewards. Well, that's deep stuff, isn't it? I could have written that definition. One who recompenses or one who pays. He is a rewarder. God is a rewarder, one who rewards. He gives those rewards to those who 
those people that diligently, the word diligent means constant in effort to accomplish something and persistent in doing anything. In other words, here I am, God, on this Sunday morning. I had a rough week last week. Excuse my terminology, but I went through hell on earth. But here I am in the church service today, and I bring you my praise, and I bring you my worship, and I exalt your holy name. We've worshiped you in song. We've raised our hands. I stepped up by faith. And according to your word, that when I come through those doors to worship and magnify, despite what kind of day I may be having, despite what kind of week I may have, you are a rewarder because I'm coming diligently to seek you. We must learn to be consistent. You know why in the professional world or even the sports world, why a team is successful is because the team is consistent in practice. They do things that most people don't see. Most of the practices are held behind closed doors. They go through the mundane things over and over again. Constant drills of certain moves and plays that are almost work to perfection. They do that because they know if they do it on a consistent level, when the time comes, they will be successful and it will lead to great success. I come to tell you, it may seem boring to the human. We come and we worship, we don't feel anything. We come and we praise, we don't feel the anointing. We come and we lift our hands, even though the body is tired and we don't feel like it. But I know that if I keep on keeping on, if I show up and I do something once I get here I know that he will reward me according to my consistency and my persistence Luke chapter 11 Jesus tells of a parable there are no names given so I have assigned them names there's one guy by the name of Joe and another guy by the name of Jim Joe and Jim are really good friends They hang out quite often together, they and their families, and they fellowship. They both work at the same place, and the Bible doesn't say this. This is just my version, just to let you know. So don't go looking and say, it didn't say that in Luke chapter 11. They barbecue on weekends. They go all 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 this, the Joe and Jim, they're best friends. One day, Jim's at home, and he has another friend who comes in from out of state unannounced. Just drops in on him, he and his family. They're pleasantly surprised, but Jim soon realizes that he doesn't have enough groceries in the house to feed everybody. Because, see, they're apostolic Pentecostal, and apostolic Pentecostals like to eat. I figured I'd get some amens on that one. So he runs across the street to Joe's house, his friend. It's late at night. He knocks on Joe's door and said, hey, buddy, I got a favor to ask you. One of my friends from out of state has popped in on me and unexpectedly, and I don't have quite enough to feed him. Can you spare a loaf of bread and some lunch meat? Joe says from the inside, buddy, it's late at night. Me and my kids are in bed. You are asking me, come on, to get out of my comfort zone. Go away. But Jim keeps knocking at the door. I need some bread and some lunch meat to give to my friend. Jesus is telling this parable. Jesus' words said, Joe gets up and gives Jim what he needs. Not because they're best friends. Not because they are good buddies. But Jesus said because of his importunity. The word importunity means persistence, almost to the point of annoyance. The reason why Joe got up was because Jim kept knocking at the door. Jim kept asking from the outside. I come to God today, come on, with needs in my life. 
and so do you. And I come knocking on the door of the throne room and say, God, here I am again. Come on. The scripture also says, will not God reward those though he bears long with them? That means I got to keep coming. I got to be consistent and I got to be persistent. I got to keep worshiping and I got to keep praying and I got to keep clapping my hands and I got to keep singing with the singers and dancing with the dancers and worshiping with the well, come on, I wish somebody get a, we got to be consistent. That's the way God's going to reward you is when you're consistent and showing up and doing something once you show up. We must be consistent. We are often, all of us, but especially us preachers and pastors, we are often very critical of the Apostle Peter because he was the one that that night told Jesus, said, everybody else is going to leave you, but not me, buddy. Man, I'm going to be right here by your side. And yet when the Roman soldiers showed up with a high priest to arrest Jesus, the Bible says that all the disciples scattered. Even Peter, who just moments before promised Jesus that he would be there by our side. We often also criticize the Apostle Peter because he betrayed Jesus. We often put him on the chopping block, so to speak. And, but I would like to bring out a point to you that's found in Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 58. And it simply says that as they was leading Jesus away, that Peter followed Afar off. Elder Roberts, my Bible does not record any of the other disciples following afar off. Sure, he ran in the garden. Sure, he betrayed him. But Peter was there that night when Jesus was standing on trial. Peter was there that night warming his hands by the where are the other disciples? Can I tell you? That because of it, yeah, he followed from afar off, but he was close enough that he can keep eyesight of Jesus, that Jesus could be in his line of uh, his view. Come on, can I tell you, come on, you may have done some things this past week that you're not proud of. You may have done some things and said some things that you probably shouldn't have, but here you are today, and you're in the house of God, and you're keeping God in your eye, your viewpoint, and you're saying, here I am. I'm not perfect. Come on. I don't have it all together, but I'm back in the house of God, and I'm going to be persistent, and I'm going to be consistent. Can I tell you that church attendance is very important? I say that because, number one, it's my job as pastor to tell you, but number two, you don't know what you're going to get when you show up. I understand sicknesses happen and vacations, emergencies pop up. I get that. But can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that one day you and I are going to stand before God and we're going to give an account according to the word. Of all the deeds that we have done, including our faithfulness to the house of God, it's going to be written down and we're going to have to give an account, and myself included. But the important part is we all face trials and tribulations and we go through tough times. And we come service after service after service. Maybe we didn't get the breakthrough last week. And it's possible you may leave today and not get the answer that you come seeking for. But it's important that you and I keep coming back. Because next service may be the service that's designed just for you. And if it's not the next service, it may be the next service. Can you put John chapter 5 up on the screen, please? We're going to start in verse number 1. And there was, and this, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse number 2. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Verse number three. 
In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, multiple needs. That sounds like the church today. It sounds like the world today. Many different needs and situations. Waiting, they were waiting for the moving of the water. Next verse, please. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. Now, commentaries are not really clear because it's not a definitive. We don't know if this season was one time a year or spread out several times through the year. But there was a particular season that an angel descended from heaven and he would trouble the water. We're not really sure what that means other than maybe uh, it was just a moving in the water. And the Bible says, whosoever was the first in after the troubling of the water was made whole or whatever disease he had. Next verse, please. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. 38 years of having an infirmity. 38 years of struggling. 38 years of battling. 38 years of torment. 38 years, come on, of going through this battle. Next verse, please. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Next verse. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. What this man was saying, time after time, I have come to this pool desiring difference. Time after time, I came to this pool looking for healing. Time after time, I have showed up. And when we see the angel, whether it was once a year or two or three times a year, whatever the case, he knew about the same time every year when the angel was going to be there. And Brother Troy, every single time, he made sure he was by the pool. And every time he tried effort to get to the pool we don't know because Jesus said he knew that he had been there a long time I don't know if it was for all 38 years it does not matter what's important is he was persistent and he was consistent at showing up at the pool every single time what if let's just borrow this scenario what if this was the day that he decided, Brother Oz, not to go to the pool? What if that was the day that he decided, I'm just going to stay home. I'll watch on live stream. Why y'all get so quiet for? Y'all shouldn't get quiet. Y'all the ones here. <laughs> what if he decided, I'll just stay home because... It probably will be the same as it was before. No. He said, I'm going to show up one more time. I'm going to the pool one more time. And can I tell you, he had an experience more than the angel coming down and trouble the water. He got an experience with a man by the name of Jesus, the one we sang about, the one we worship. The reason why I keep coming back to church is I may not got my answer last week or last month or last year, but this may be my Sunday. This may be the day that I get my experience. This may be the day that I get my breakthrough. This may be the day that I get what I need. Be consistent. Be consistent. We all got troubles and trials. Amen. We all got battles that we face. Amen. We got tough times that we go through. Amen. I'm giving you a lot of stuff to say amen to. Let me read you a scripture. Now, I'm going to read from the 
NIV version because I think it gives more of an impact. Not disregarding, disregarding the King James Version, but I think the NIV gives more of a powerful impact when you read. The man that's writing this is one whom I, can, I consider probably the greatest one single missionary that ever walked the face of the earth. That's the Apostle Paul. He's writing this found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start about verse number 21. To my shame, I admit that we were too weak for that. Whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast about. Are they Hebrews? He said, so am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. And I know some of you consider me like that, out of my mind. And that's okay. I don't deny the fact. He said, I am more. Again, this is the New International Version of the Bible. He said, I have worked much harder. Been in prison more frequently. Been flogged more severely. And been exposed to death again and again. Five times, this is Paul writing, five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Five different times he received 39 lashes. Let me read to you what commentary says about this. Found in Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse number 3. It says this, 40 blows he may give him and no more, lest he should exceed this and beat him with many blows above these, and your brother be humiliated in your sight. According to the rabbis, that they restricted the number of stripes you could give to 39. The reason why they did this was not out of mercy, but they feared that there might be a miscount and 40 stripes would be exceeded by accident. An ancient Jewish writing describes the procedure for receiving stripes in a Jewish court. The two hands of the criminal are bound to a post. Then the servant of the synagogue either pulls or tears off his clothes till he leaves his breast and shoulders bare. A stone or block is placed behind him on which the servant stands. He holds in his hands a scourge made of leather divided in the four tails. He who scourges lays one hand on the criminal's breast. Come on, he lays one third of the stripes on the criminal's breast, one third on his right shoulder, and another on the left. The man who receives the punishment is neither standing or sitting. But the whole time stooping, and the man who smites, smites with all of his strength with one hand. Paul said five different times, I was placed in the Jewish court, and I received 39 stripes. With someone giving all they had, no doubt he carried the scars. No doubt for the rest of his life. He had evidence of what he went through. Come on, we think we have bad days, and we think we have bad weeks. Can I hear an amen? Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones, and he was left for dead. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, he said on top of all of this, all the physical punishment that I have endured, he said I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. All of this is piled upon the great apostle Paul. And yet I find in Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 14, he says I press toward the mark. Despite all of that, I'm going to be consistent. Despite all the 
Come on. All the trials and tribulations and the beatings and the shipwrecks and the scourgings and the stonings and the false accusations. I press towards the mark because there's something greater and there's something mightier waiting for me on the other side. He was consistent. Tradition says that when he was writing to Timothy, where he was writing and said, I have fought a good fight and I have kept the faith. Tradition says that they had placed him in a prison with a window where he could see the chopping block that was going to cut his head off. And he's writing, I'm almost to the end, Timothy. I can see the prize ahead. You know why I got there, Timothy? Because I was consistent. Because I stuck with it. Timothy, there was a days that I didn't feel good. There was days I felt off. There were days I did not. Let me let you know something. I wanna, I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to solicit any kind of sympathy from you at all. But there's been days I've stepped in that platform. I don't feel a drop of the Holy Ghost. I don't feel one goose bump. I don't feel one iota of Jesus nowhere in the house. And all you fools are shouting and swinging from the chandeliers and flipping over chairs. And I don't feel nothing. But you know what? I know I got to keep coming back because it doesn't do me any good staying outside the church house. I keep coming back. And I keep seeking God. There's going to be days where it seems that the pastor is going to be off. Come on, trust me. I have days where I went home and I have cried because I thought, God, I've done such a miserable job. Help me, Jesus, because I need your help. There's been days that no doubt the, the musicians and the singers may have seemed off. Maybe no, time, no doubt there's days that the Sunday school teachers are off and it can play with your mind if you're not careful. But you know what? Next church service, I'm going to be in my seat and I'm I'm going to be worshiping and I'm going to be praising and I'm going to be lifting up the name of Jesus because it might be my service. I'll be honest with you. Several weeks ago, I hit about a three, four, three or four week span where I faced physical, mental, and spiritual attack like I have never faced in my life. All of them at the same time. And yet I stood in the platform. You never knew it. I preached the word of God to you. Worried about certain things and situations. Worried about my wife who's going through physical situations in which most of you do not know about. But here I am today telling you that if you hang on and you're consistent, come on, that if you, if you hold true, God will make a way He will bring you out There were days that Paul Didn't feel like worshiping There were days that Paul Didn't feel like writing There were days that Paul Did not feel like preaching But he said I have fought a good one Because I have been consistent Maybe, maybe you're here today Maybe Maybe possibly you're here today, and I will tell you that I've had no problem feeling the Holy Ghost today. Maybe you're here today, and you haven't felt anything. Come back next time. Maybe you won't feel anything the next time. I, can't, I don't know the mind of God. I don't know His ways. Isaiah said His ways are so much higher than ours. I cannot understand and comprehend His ways. But I do know that the writer said he is a rewarder of those who keep showing up. He is a rewarder of those that keep being faithful. He is a rewarder of those who keep worshiping. He is a rewarder of those who keep praising despite the circumstances around them. I want to read you something today. In 1818, this gentleman lost his mother at the age of... Nine. In 1828, he had a sister whom he was very close to that passed away. 1832, he lost his job. The same year, 1832, he was defeated for legislature. 1833, he failed in business. The same year of 1833, he went into debt and it took him 10 years to pay that debt off. In 1834, he was elected to legislature. In 1835, the woman whom he loved and was to marry died. In 1836, he had a nervous breakdown. In 1838, he was defeated for speaker. In 
1843, he was defeated for nomination of Congress. I know this because I found this on Google, not because I was there. In 1848, he lost the renomination. In 1849, he was rejected for land officer. In 1850, his son Edward died. In 1854, he was defeated for Senate. In 1856, he was defeated for nomination for vice president. Most of us would have given up long before them. In 1858, again, he was defeated for Senate. But in 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected president of the United States of America. And he is regarded as probably one of the greatest that ever held office. You know how he got there? It's because he was consistent. Come on, you may be licking your wounds today. And you may be licking your wounds tomorrow. And you may be licking your wounds next week. But you got to be consistent. And you got to be persistent. And you got to keep showing up. And you got to keep worshiping. And you got to keep praising. Because those seasons don't last forever. Yeah. Tough day. Keep showing up. Tough week, keep showing up. Tough month, keep showing up. Tough year, keep showing up. Tough multiple years, keep showing up. Things are not going right, keep showing up. Things are not going smooth, keep showing up. You and mama arguing, keep showing up. Brother Troy was the only one to amen on that. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Your kids are acting fools. Keep showing up. Work is not going right. You keep showing up. Trouble with the family. You keep showing up. Trouble in the finances. You keep showing up. In other words, God wants us to be consistent and keep showing up. Because I end it with this today. As you stand. The, the verse in Psalms chapter 30 and verse number 5. For his anger endureth but for a moment. And in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. Yes, there's going to be tough times. Yes, there's going to be difficult times. But I know that it does not always last. I know it's not for eternity. Because joy will come in the morning. All over the building. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise if you would. If you get nothing else from this message today, please know I encourage you to be consistent. Physically, we all get tired. I don't care what age you are, you get tired physically. You get tired mentally. You get tired spiritually. It brings you down. It makes you want to curl up under a blanket and just cry sometimes. But that's not our calling. That is not our duty. Our duty is to show up. And then once we get here, when the musicians begin to play and the songs begin to go forth, our duty is then to raise our hands and to lift our voice and to worship and to tell Jesus I didn't get what I came for last week I didn't get what I came for two weeks ago I didn't get what I was looking for last month but here I am again and I believe and I expect that today is going to be my day be I'm talking to somebody today be consistent Come on, the enemy will throw curveballs your way. He will try to discourage you. But I encourage you to be consistent. I want everybody, if you would, to bow your heads and close your eyes. These altars are open today for anybody who wants to come pray. We don't point fingers and we don't accuse and we don't try to figure out. I am telling you that we need to be consistent. God, in the name of Jesus. I have preached and given everything within me today, God. The message, the thought that I know, no doubt, that we need to be consistent. 
And then if I keep showing up, if I'm persistent, Lord, then one day is going to be my day. And the sun's going to break forth on me. And the sun's going to shine. And victory will be mine. Come on, would you worship just for a moment? Come on, would you praise just for a moment? Would you be consistent just for a moment? Let the Lord speak to you today. Come on, there's some in the altars today. Will anybody else want to join them? Come on, come on, come on. Let the Lord speak to you today. See how it is. I'm still standing. You wonder how I made it through the storm. Oh! 
today and for some odd reason you didn't come forward I want everybody if you would to raise your hands just for a moment take a moment just to talk to him Lord I know this message was for me today God I got to be a little bit more consistent I got to be a little bit more persistent because I know that if I'm faithful and I'm diligent in seeking you you are a rewarder and today I give it all to you I give it all to you Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise, if you would. Now, what I'm about to say is not prophetic, so don't let it blow your minds. I'm not saying, yay, that's the, I've been in church all my life, so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Possibly even today, after you've gotten home and the spirit settled down, the enemy's going to come to you today, and he's some of you, and he's going to say, you didn't get what you went for. So I end with this story. Brother Jeff Arnold, who's a very prominent minister in our organization, he's a bishop of Pentecostals of Gainesville now. He was in the Navy. He boxed for a while with Brother Baker in the Navy. And he said there was one particular match. He was going against a guy that was much bigger than he was. And Brother, Brother Arnold said, man, I was getting the snot beat out of me. He said, and he said, it, I got knocked down several times. And one time I got knocked down and said I was in the process of getting, getting up. And the opponent said, Arnold, 
Why are you getting up? You need to stay down. And Trey, Brother Arnold said, he told his opponent, he said, because if I get back up, I might get a lucky punch in, and I just might win. The enemy's going to tell you, you might as well stay down. He might want to, he's going to tell you you're defeated. But you tell him, oh, yeah, wait till next service. You thought I acted a fool this time? You wait till I come to those doors again. You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to worship and I'm going to praise more than I ever have. Why? Because I'm going to be consistent and I'm going to be persistent. Be encouraged. God's got great things in store for each one of you and for this church as a whole. Thank you for being here. Thank the Lord for being here, the spirit, the anointing. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise one more time if you would. Come back Wednesday night, Wednesday night Bible study. Let God have his way. We love and appreciate each and one of you. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. We love you.